Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a quadratic equation. Anyways, I meant z to the power 14 and that is equal to z bar, which is the complex conjugate. If you're new to complex numbers and you're not familiar with basics, go ahead and watch out the, not watch out, watch the lecture videos that I made. I made a playlist. You can go ahead and check them out because we go into the very basics of complex numbers, starting with i squared equals negative 1. Great, so let's go ahead and make two attempts at solving this problem. The first attempt would be, since the name of this channel is a plus bi, you knew that, right? Then I, I want to replace z with a plus bi because that's the general representation for a complex number. a and b are real. I is the number whose square equals negative one. In other words, I is one of the square roots of negative one because there's two of them, right? Cool. What do you do with that? Plug it in and take a plus bi. Oops, didn't want to copy anything. Take a plus bi and raise it to the 14th power and good grief, that's gonna give you 15 terms with the binomial theorem. But don't worry, Wolfram Alpha did it for you and this is what you get as the expanded form. And of course, this is supposed to equal z bar, which is a minus bi. And then from here, you can set the real parts. This is a real part. This is a real part. This is a real part. It's kind of kind of skips around, right? And equate the imaginary parts. And hopefully you'll be able to solve that equation if you're not, if you don't give up by that time. But anyways, you get the idea. This is very, very cumbersome. You're hopefully not going to do it. You'll probably never ever do this right promise okay cool now let's see if you can solve this with a much much better method and i forgot to call this the first method super duper painful we're not even gonna get into the details but you get the idea this is what it looks like very very heavy and busy all right anyways i also made a plot or wolfram alpha made it for us with the real parts it just looks beautiful. What does this mean? That's another question, but it just looks great, don't you think? Okay, awesome. Let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem in a much better way, which is usually called the second method. All right, ready? Now, we have this equation one more time, z to the 14 equals z bar, and then instead of replacing z with a plus bi because that gives us a lot of difficulties. Let's do something smarter. First of all, what kind of number are we looking at? For example, one of the things you can definitely do is replace z with r times e to the i theta. Here uh, r represents the modulus or the absolute value of z and theta represents the argument or the angle. So. If you raise this to the 14th power, it's fairly easy to do. You're gonna get r to the 14, e to the power 14, i theta, and then do the same thing on the right-hand side. Oh, how do you conjugate a complex number in polar form? Easy. If z is equal to r e to the i theta, then z bar is gonna be r e to the negative i theta because sine is even, I mean odd, cosine is even, so it's gonna give you the conjugate. Also, the reciprocal because the modulus is 1. You get the idea? Cool. So this should probably give you a nice equation to work with, but we're going to do a better job than this. First of all, I want to absolute value both sides. Why? Because I can, first of all. Second of all, it gives us the value of absolute value. <laughs> the value of absolute values. So let's go ahead and absolute value both sides like this and like that. And then the absolute value of z to the 14th can actually be written as the absolute value of z to the power 14, so the power can go out. And the bar doesn't really change anything. It's gonna be the same thing as absolute value of z. Let's go ahead and call this r because that's what it is, right? And let's go ahead and do the math. If you do the math, you're gonna get the following. This is r, but at the same time, it's r to the power 14, because this is r. You get the idea? r to the 14 equals r. 
r to the 14 minus r equals 0. Beautiful. Now take the r outside, r to the 13 minus 1 equals 0. From here you get two solutions. And normally if we had instead of a 14, like if suppose we had 17, an odd power of r, then we would be getting three solutions because negative 1 would also be this, one of the solutions. But you would not accept negative 1 because r, the modulus, the absolute value cannot be negative. Make sense? But can it be 0? Absolutely. Absolute value can absolutely be 0. That's when z is 0. So if the absolute value of a complex number is 0, that number has to be 0. In other words, there is no other complex number whose absolute value is 0. It's only 0. Okay? Cool. What happens with r equals 1? Well, it just gives us r equals 1. So we can basically just replace z with e to the i theta instead of what? r e to the i theta. So z can be written as from here e to the i theta, which is nice because it has a modulus of 1. If you replace z with that e to the i theta to the power 14 equals e to the negative i theta, which is the conjugate. And from here you get e to the 14 i theta equals e to the negative i theta. If you go ahead and set these equal to each other, okay, 14 i theta equals negative i theta, and then kind of like cancel out the i theta, you get 14 equals negative 1 if you're trying to be silly. If you want to be uh, serious, then you probably want to do a little differently and kind of write, write it like this. Maybe add i theta to both sides, and that's going to give you 15 i theta equals 0. i can't be 0, 15 can't be 0 as far as we know. Theta needs to be 0. But is 0 the only value that's kind of like very limited, right? But we don't want that. So there's absolutely a better way to do this. And that is multiplying the right-hand side with 1. <laughs> it's like, what? Why do you need to multiply by 1? That doesn't change anything. It doesn't or it does. Depends. If I just change this one magically or mathematically to e to the power 2 pi n i, which is 1 in the complex world, then things change quite a bit. 14 i theta equals negative i theta plus 2 pi n i. Put the 15 i theta on one side and 2 pi n i on the other side. Now you can confidently cancel out the i. And since I'm looking for theta, I'll be getting 2 pi n divided by 15. And of course, n can be an integer. n is an integer, positive and negative. I can replace n with 0, which is going to give me 0, which is the only solution we found just by setting those equals. So we always have to include multiple representations, right? The multi-valued nature of complex numbers. So now if n is 0, theta is 0. If n is 1, then theta is going to be 2 pi over 15, which is 24 degrees, right? 180 divided by 5. Wait a minute, this, that's not true. Oof, I was supposed to write 15. Okay, 180 divided by 15 is 12. That's going to be 24 degrees. So, what is the answer? E to the i theta. So, z is going to be from here e to the i times 2 pi over 15. Or you can write this as cosine of 2 pi over 15. I don't know why I keep writing 5. Plus i times sine 2 pi over 15. Or you can replace it with 24 degrees if you like that better all right you get the idea so we kind of find the absolute value info and then plug it in and then we solve the problem and that brings us to the end of this video of course there are multiple solutions i just wrote one of them the rest is yours and this brings us to the end of this video thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye